You know what? Hell with it. Let's try it. I have a word from the Lord for the month of December for you. Let's do it. I have a word from the Lord for you for the month of December. Are you ready? Here it is. I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade. Cue the music. This drunken little German monk. Probably by the end, yeah. He's intoxicated with himself. Nah, I'm pretty sure it's Soko. Sober him. Light now, <laughs> Francis. Sober him. I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade, a re-reboot of a former weekly theological podcast where we sit down at the kitchen table, grab ourselves an ice-cold, frosty adult beverage, and we talk about theology. Lutheran Lemonade, to gladden the heart of man. Now, traditionally, Lutheran Lemonade is beer. That's what Lutheran Lemonade is. But today, it's the holiday season, and given what we're going to go over, I need something a little stronger. So tonight, I am being festive. It is Southern Comfort and Eggnog. Ah, probably lost half my fans already. I know, he's drinking eggnog. Gross! If you take the time to look at how eggnog is made, you understand the necessity for alcohol in it. <laughs> never, never watch how eggnog is made. You'll never drink it. So where can you find Lutheran Lemonade? Well, it's been away for a while, but it's on anchor.fm slash lutheran-lemonade. Anchor.fm slash lutheran-lemonade. I still have to upload a couple more of the old, I don't know, do we call them classics at this point? But that's where you can find it Thursday evenings. On Friday, you can find Lutheran Lemonade on YouTube. Just look for the 1517 circle in the word films. That's the YouTube channel. You found it. 1517 films. We're on that. We're always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. That's right. Christianity is referred to as the faith. One singular. The faith. Once and for all delivered to who? To you and me. To the saints. There is one true Christian Faith And this faith is found where the word is rightly preached and the sacraments are rightly administered. There is the faith once for all delivered to the saints. But this, this is Lutheran lemonade. And this, this we do something a little bit different. It's a little bit more relaxed. We're at the kitchen table. This is where Christian instruction is supposed to happen at the kitchen table. And what are we doing today? Well, we're making fun of charismatics. That's what we're doing today. As a matter of fact, given that we're going to make fun of charismatics, I think it's only fitting. Let me check my sources here. This video is sponsored. This video is brought to you by 1 Kings 18.27. That's right. Before you come at me for mocking, for making fun of, for taking delight and joy in picking apart the claims of the charismatics, I want you to read 1 Kings 1827 and tell me that the people of God have never done this. This man that we're going to review is going to say he is a Melchizedin, Melchizedian, um, uh, the people that fought during Hanukkah. That's who he is. And uh, really, we're going to come to find out he's a Judaizer. And the entire book of Galatians is written to us about people like him. And if you think my mockery is going to be too harsh, just remember... What God says in the olden days towards people who say, thus saith the Lord, but the Lord has not said. That's right. We should take them out and stone them. So if my mockery and my joking about and my sincerest making fun of this, not necessarily this man as a person, that would be ad hominem, but the kind of charismaticism that he represents, if you think that's too harsh, well, God used to have these people stoned to death. Because heresy is that serious. We are just going to mock. And we mock with a purpose. We mock for the sole reason of showing that this is actually mockable. We can read in the New Testament where Paul talks about people engaging in these charismatic gifts. And he's like, well, the, the people coming in to your church are going to think you're insane. So don't do it. That's right. Everything Paul had to say about the charismatic gifts and speaking in tongues was actually advocating that you not speak in tongues. You just preach the word or prophesy, as the Apostle Paul would say, because a prophet is someone who speaks the word of God. 
And since we are in Advent and we are waiting for the word to become flesh and make his dwelling among us at Christmas, we recognize he already has come. Jesus is the word of God made flesh. And Jesus is God's final word to mankind. That's right. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So this uh, this is not meant to pick on this man, this Ben Lim, uh, this Ben Lim Global video that we're going to be tearing apart. This is this is not to pick on him as a person. This is to to pick on a, a, a symptom that exists in a heretical sect of Christianity known as charismaticism. What this man is going to do is he he's a prophet. So this is prophetic word for the month, December. He is proclaiming, thus saith the Lord. Except for God has not said. God has not said any of the things that he's about to say. And he's going to start out talking about Christmas. Why not? It's December, right? But then he's going to take the whole video. It's like 50 some odd minutes long. And he's going to, so he's going to say, Christmas is about Jesus. Christmas is about the gospel. And then he's going to talk about Hanukkah for the entire time. The entire time. And of course, he's going to slip in some speaking in tongues. And uh, thank goodness he's a professional because I don't know if you've ever seen a charismatic try to speak in tongues for the first time, but it is not pretty. You want to know what it looks like when a charismatic tries to speak in tongues for the first time? Roll the clip. Yep. Yeah, that's what you look like. All right, so we're going to get started. It's a 50-minute video. I've broken it down into, I think, like three or four segments, and we're just going to rip on him the entire way through for the sole purpose of showing how laughable what he's doing actually is. So let's go to Ben, ben Lim Global and see what the prophetic word of the Lord is for the month of December. Uh, and, you know, this is, I'm not going to really go into the paganism of Christmas. But I believe that God still uses Christmas. God still uses this month, okay? I remember when I lived in China, okay, uh, when I lived in India, Christmas was such an important time to evangelize and to share the gospel with people. Right. Christmas is an important time to evangelize and share the gospel. The gospel is that God sent forth his son into our flesh, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law. That's you and me. And God in his son poured out his wrath onto his son at the cross where your debt and my debt was nailed to Christ on the cross. He bore the wrath. He rose again from the dead, victorious over sin, death, and the power of the devil. And now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The debt has been paid to tell us that it is accomplished. That's the gospel. So Christmas is a wonderful time to evangelize, and we certainly should. But that's not what he means, and that's literally not what he's going to do for the entirety of this video. Okay. It's not just about materialism. It's not just about franchising. It's not just about, you know, uh, gifts and material blessings. It's not about that. But it really is about Jesus. It's about family. But I'm telling you, you're going to close and finish 2020 with a big bang in the name of Jesus. Someone say amen. And it's... Well, I mean, I recently signed up for HBO Max, and I can watch The Big Bang Theory now on HBO Max. Does that mean... Is that what he means? I'm going to end the year with a big bang? What does that mean? Like, if I go to my catechism, it's in the living room. If I go to my catechism... And I read what Luther says about the Ten Commandments. You know, uh, you shall have no other gods. Then it says, what does this mean? Well, it means that we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. He explains what he means. What This guy never explains. So, okay, uh, I'm going to end 2020 with a Big Bang. Well, I just got HBO Max, and uh, now I can watch the Big Bang Theory. So, prophecy fulfilled. Beautiful to see, again, what's happening in the stock markets, okay? 
Listen, I prophesy about the stock markets all the time because that's how God uh, has has caused me to operate it. Okay. No, it's because that's how God. The, that's how Mammon scratches our itching ears. That's Mammon. That's not God. That's not God. You prophesy over the stock markets because of you worship Mammon. Caused me to function. I prophesy into businesses. I prophesy into regions. I prophesy into the nation of America, into the stock market, the economy, the wealth of God's people. So I'm saying amen. Yeah. God wants you to be healthy, wealthy, and prosperous. Or, or there's the, the Jesus of the Bible that said, in this world you will have trouble. <laughs> there's the Jesus that refused to remove the thorn from Paul's side and said, my grace is sufficient. God wants you to be wealthy. My grace is sufficient. In this world, you will have trouble. <laughs> okay, Ben. Okay. And uh, it's incredible what God's doing in the stock market. And the Lord told me, said... The Lord told me. That means what follows is a thus saith the Lord. And if it's a thus saith the Lord, it belongs in Scripture. And if he's not willing to write what he's about to say in his Bible and call it the faith once for all delivered to the saints, then even he doesn't believe his own bullshit. Get ready for a big boom and a boomerang and skyrocketing in the stock market, even in the month of December. Amen. Okay. So don't say amen. So don't say I'll receive it. And of course, just a few days ago, the Dow uh, hit 30,000. Remember when he said Christmas was about evangelizing Jesus? Now he's talking about the Tao. Just saying. It's the highest number that it's ever reached in American history. So it is a season, as I posted, uh, as I prophesied in the beginning of the year, as, as it was posted on the Elijah List and many other prophetic forums. There's prophetic forums. That 2020 is a year where world records will be broken. I want to tell you right now, you are going to break some records, even in this month of December. Someone say amen. Even in the month of December, you're about to break some records. Someone say amen. What record? What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that, or with these words, God tenderly invites us to, or in the Gospel of Matthew, our Lord Jesus says, what does this mean? Th these are just vague words with no meaning so that you, the gullible, can attach the meaning to it and claim prophecy fulfilled. This is never how God prophesies in the Old Testament. Never how God prophesies in the Old Testament. All right, give me some hearts and likes here, people of God, and do share, nope. share. And, um... And of course, one of the words that the Lord gave me recently is that Christmas is coming early this year. Okay, Christmas. Someone say Christmas is coming early this year. Once again. <sighs> Christmas is coming on December 25th. Again, but okay, Christmas is coming early. What does this mean? You are the prophet. You need to tell us what this means. Even Jesus explained his parables to his disciples. What does this mean? <clears throat> Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. That felt like Hebrew. That was Hebrew, right? No, just Middle Eastern sounding gibberish. Arabic sounding gibberish. <laughs> was not born this month. Okay. He was born in the, in the time of Sukkot or the time of the Feast of Tabernacles which was right around uh, October time, okay? Well, if Jesus was born in October, then why is Halloween evil? The <laughs> so th this is all we're going to get for literally. You can watch the whole video. Link will be in the description below. This is all we're going to get him of from him about Jesus. That's it. Right? I'm going to let him go on for a little bit, but we've got more clips we've got to get to. Um, and so... Theologians and scholars believe that Jesus was born in the Feast of Sukkot, of Tabernacles, not in December, Christmas time, okay? But still, we celebrate and we love Jesus. It's all good. Actually, we celebrate Christmas time and Easter because the ancient church in the earliest centuries after her founding on the day of Pentecost established what's called a lectionary, and it just so happened that the readings for Christmas came around December time. 
Y'all want to say it's a ripoff of Saturnalia and all this other bull jargon? That's literally it. Electionary. The church established electionary, and the Christmas readings happened to fall in December. That's the, that's the mystery. That's why we celebrate in December. All right. Don't get your panties in, in a rut, right? Uh, don't get a twist. Excuse me. I do not wear panties. I wear Suppertech. There's a difference. All right. Jesus was born in Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. You know what this is? You know what this is? This is a misappropriation of Hebrew. And I, I just realized this now. He does this on purpose for no other reason than to lead into what he's going to lead into next, which is going to be the miracle of Hanukkah. So let me get my notes here. Let me prompt this at the next timestamp. We're going to about 37 minutes in. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll get some, we'll get some tongues uh, out of them. Now, I had to watch this whole thing. Uh, and, and I watched it many times and, and, um, I've even listened to it while taking a shower and thank God I was in the shower because I felt dirty listening to this I feel I'm going to have to take a shower again afterwards. Cause I feel just dirty listening to this, but we're at about the 37 minute mark, 37 and one seconds. Oh, there we go. Let's play. Amen. A Maccabee anointing. I'm telling you, God's bringing you into a company of Maccabees. Yep, I'm telling you, God is bringing you into the company of Maccabees. Now, he has laid out the whole history of Hanukkah. Christmas is a time to evangelize about Jesus. That's what he said, and I didn't disagree. But he spent, from about the 10-minute mark to the 37-minute mark, explaining Hanukkah and the Festival of Lights. But yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. God's bringing you to a company of people that are willing to fight together. Not fight each other, fight together for the cause of the gospel of Jesus. The gospel that he has not yet proclaimed. And I don't know if we're going to get into this because it's been a couple days. I literally had to take a psychological break from this, this garbage. I don't know if he already explained it or not, or if he's going to, but what he's talking about fighting and being a Maccabee, he's talking about fighting the political system in the United States of America right now. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about politics. And he's not coming right out and saying it, but he's laying it out there that they're not letting you go to church. They're persecuting you. They're blah, 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 blah. Never mind, you know, where Roman says obey the governing authorities. Nope, you got to be a Maccabee. You got to fight. We continue. Number three, the third prophetic point that you can expect in this month of December is miracles. Someone say milagros in Espanol. La palabra para miracles esta milagros. This is a month of miracles. Miracles, miracles, miracles. I'm telling you, you're going to eat miracles. You're going to drink miracles. Yo tengo tres bigotes in mis piscinas. Hey, that was Spanish, right? Yes, you just said I have three mustaches in my swimming pools. Did the Holy Spirit directly reveal to you that you have three mustaches in your swimming pools, or did you just subconsciously shout out the only words you remember from Senorita Van Meter's fifth period Spanish class your freshman year of high school? Seventh period, actually. Uh, <laughs> look, pal, just because you speak Spanish legitimately does not mean what you're about to do later is any good. You're going to order miracles. You're going to walk in miracles. You're going to breathe miracles. You're, you're going to have miracles in your hair. You're going to have miracles coming out of your pores. You're going to have miracles. You know, you're going to talk miracles. You're going to... Every... Wait, 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 wait. Admittedly, I have a lot of stuff in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> have miracles in your hair. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure I have um, Hair Oil by Blue Mon, and I have Pre Styler by Blue Mon, and I have Cavalier Clay by Blue Mon. That's what's in my hair. So, congratulations. We've clearly established that Ryan wears separate tech brand underwear, ergo his panties are not in a wad, and we've concluded that Ryan uses Blue Mon products in his hair, Miracle of miracles. 
miracles coming out of your pores. You're going to have miracles. You know, you're going to talk miracles. You're going to, everything is miraculous. Miracle, miracle, miracles. Do you believe in miracles? Oh. This month is a month of miracles. <laughs> My gosh. I see those chains falling. Money miracles. Health miracles. Family miracles. Health, wealth, and prosperity. This is not the gospel. This is not the gospel. The gospel is that God sent forth his only son, born of a woman, born under the law, nailed him to a cross, poured out his wrath for your sin onto his son. His son yielded his spirit in obedience to the father, subjected himself to the grave, rose again victorious from the grave, and now there is no condemnation for those who are in him. That is the gospel. What he's doing, this history of Hanukkah, and because of the, the I don't know, the eight crazy nights, now all of a sudden, you know, we're going to have miracles in our hair. Focus miracles, vision miracles, personal miracles, corporate miracles, miracles in the government, miracles in the elections, miracles, 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 miracles. Ho! Oh, this is a month of miracles. But why would you receive miracles if you're not willing to stand up? and move forward in boldness like a Maccabee. Remember, you don't get the miracle unless you buck the political system. And if you don't believe me, link to the video in the description below. Watch the whole thing. Peter did not walk on water until he stepped out of the boat. Misappropriating a text. That is a descriptive text. It is describing something that happened. It is not prescribing Christian behavior in the church. A confusion of prescriptive and descriptive. But, uh, you know, reasons. Step out like Peter, like the Maccabees, and watch God cause you to walk on miracles. Someone say miracles. This is a month of miracles, people of God. You're going to defeat your enemies. Amen. You're going to multiply in finances. Amen. You're going to skim down, but you're going to grow and expand. Amen. I mean, admittedly, I have been trying to skim down. I... <laughs> this guy knows an awful lot about me. He knows what kind of underwear I wear. He knows th that I put... Um, product in my hair. He knows that I'm trying to lose weight because my body does this now when it used to do this. This man knows an awful lot about me. Maybe he is a prophet. You're going to have miracles in your family. Family salvations. People are being saved. The prodigals are returning. Amen. We're going to see miracles in the governmental realm because it's the 12th month of 2020. 12th said for government, kingdom, administration. Amen. This is a month... There's a word for that, what he just did there, and I'm pretty sure the Old Testament doesn't doesn't smile upon that with any any semblance of favor. Miracles, amen. Remember, this is a month where, where God's releasing blessings, okay? You're going to plunder the enemies, amen. This is a month of miracles. You're going to shine bright like the menorah, have greater influence. You're going to have greater visibility. You're about to influence more, but God's about to stretch and expand you. Amen. This is a month of miracles. I believe in miracles because I believe in God. I believe in miracles because I believe in God. I believe that when water combined with God's word touches an infant's forehead, that they are buried with Christ into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I believe that when I confess my sins and my pastor says, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word and by his authority, announce the grace of God unto all of you. Therefore, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I believe that when that happens, I am forgiven. I believe that Jesus is present, bodily present, in the bread and his blood is 
in the wine that the body and bread that the bread is his body and the wine is his blood is that what you mean by a miracle or do you mean leg lengthening financial gain or the fake speaking in tongues which you're which you've done already throughout this video we haven't seen it but we will we will is that what you mean this is a month of miracles amen the menorah can stand for all right enough we're gonna bump ahead to the next little bit here i think i took that one a bit too long the 42 minute mark let me pray with you people of god and i thank you right now for liking commenting sharing do give us some hearts and likes okay like do you really do you really like me for commenting on this do you really <laughs> are you sure <clears throat> or if you're a hater, give me some anger face. Let me see your war face. But this month of December is going to be a month of... I'm not a hater. I don't hate you. I hate what you're doing. But I don't hate you. So what category would you put someone in who takes the time to dissect what you're doing, point out its, its hilarious absurdity... For the sole purpose of showing its absurdity so that people can walk away from you. What do you call us? Oh. Hey, haters. I'm telling you, this month of December, Kislev Hanukkah. Gifts, blessings, from K-Love Hanukkah? I don't listen to K-Love. Sorry. Motion, provision, protection's coming. And this month, God is going to make your enemies mad. God is going to make your enemies mad. Mad. Hallelujah. Someone say, I will multiply. Someone say, I will. Now he's in my marriage bed. My goodness, my underwear, my hair, my vision. Now he's in my marriage bed. You're going to multiply. That's not for you to say. Get out of my marriage bed. Have victory. Someone say, I will defeat my enemy. Someone say, I will. Be bold. Someone say, I will. So now we've gotten to the name it and claim it portion. There, we've got the healthy, wealthy, and the prosperous. Now we're at the name it and claim it because you can't have any of this. None of this is for you unless you name it and claim it because rules. Take a stand. Someone say, I will. Let me pray with y'all. the hell was that what the actual hell was that what <laughs> hold on hold on wait 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 um um i think other people have done this too let's let's consult <laughs> right right this is so clearly not a language not a language this so blatantly ignores that every example of speaking in tongues in the New Testament church was a human language. And um, also, Ben, where's your interpreter, ma'am? Where's your interpreter? Paul said we had to have interpreters. Where is your interpreter? Where is he? You're breaking the rules, ma'am. I know, it's tongues of angels. Because... Paul wasn't clearly, you know, making a figure of speech to talk about how stupid people who insist on speaking in tongues are, which is actually what he was doing. So he's like, look, even if I speak, spoke in the most holiest of holiest of holiest of languages, but, the, you see, it's, it's blatantly obvious that that was a figure of speech to point out the absurdity of their insistence on speaking in tongues. But you know, we have to speak in tongues. We, and they find this so amazing. Every single time a charismatic does this, this is the response. He said it's incredible! It's gonna be some kind of a record! Everyone loves a slinky, you gotta get a slinky, 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 go, slinky, go! 
Oh man, <laughs> these charismatic these charismatics are are very much like slinkies. Charismatics are like slinkies because nothing would give me more joy than to push them down a flight of stairs. I'm just saying. <laughs> we move on to our last clip. <laughs> Oh, I know. <gasps> He's being so harsh. He said he wanted to push him down a flight of stairs. Go back and read the book of Galatians where Paul told the Judaizers to cut their own dicks off. That's right. Yeah, that's what he said. That's what he said. If you're going to insist on circumcision, you should just go full shebang on it. Just <laughs> chop it off. I feel the right now. Listen, all of you watching right now, you if you receive this word, if you receive this word, like you're like, whoa, Pastor Ben, this word for December, Hanukkah miracles, the Maccabees and Rome, you receive this word. I want you to sow into this word right now. I want you to sow into this word. A lot of, I want you to put in the link mm -hmm. right there. Don't leave, okay? If you made it this far, you've been fed, you've been Make blessed, it rain, you received, you're an expectation. I want you to... I've been lied to, I've been deceived, and now you are asking me to pay for it. That is what is happening. This is called, this is what the Bible calls preaching for shameful gain, what ought not be taught. Preaching for shameful gain, what ought not be taught. And how is this any different than this? When a coin in the coffer rings, a soul from purgatory springs. That's right. We pride ourselves so much on not being Roman Catholic. You're Roman Catholic. You're still paying for it. When a seed offering is sown, you get your miracle. When a coin in the coffer rings, a soul from purgatory springs. Same damn thing. Add your faith to it. Honor the word of God in this moment. Oh, shit. I've been doing the same. I've been clapping and snapping the whole time. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm prophetic. Ooh. Maybe I'm prophetic. Ooh. Am I a prophet? Am I? Am I? Am I? Am I? Well, let's... Ooh. You know what? Now with it. Let's try it. I have a word from the Lord for the month of December for you. Let's do it. I have a word from the Lord for you for the month of December. Are you ready? Here it is. And this is sure, sure, surely from the mouth of the Lord. And it is for you. Here it is. This is straight from God's brain. My lips, your ears. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nations. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil for the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor you have broken as in the days of Midian. For, boot the, for every boot of the trampling warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. But Ryan, you just read from the Bible. Gosh darn right I did. I read from Isaiah. That's what a prophet of the Lord does in these end times. They read the word of God to you. Am I a prophet insofar as that I spoke the word of the Lord to you? Yes, that's what a prophet is. This man, Ben Lim, not a prophet. So guard yourselves, people. Test everything. Test everything. Don't as, as Pastor Roseboro would advise you, don't watch these videos. Don't watch my videos with an open mind. Watch them with an open Bible. Compare what people are saying in the name of God to the Word of God. 
And when you do that, you will realize that charismaticism is at best heterodoxy and at worst damnable heresy. Damnable heresy. Damn him. Anathema on him for charging you money to receive his lies. Damn him, anathema on him and anyone like him for not telling you that Jesus died for you and that this is a free gift of God that comes by grace through faith in Christ alone. Damn him, anathema to him. I hope you enjoy your millstone. I hope you enjoy your millstone. You and everybody else like you, Ben Hint Lim. Everybody else like you. I hope that rope is good and snug around your neck. Actually, that's not true. I sincerely hope that you repent. Because I don't want a millstone around your neck. I don't want you to drown in the depths of hell for misleading and leading the little ones who trust in Christ to sin. I don't want that for you. It is my fervent prayer that these charismatic liars repent. And it's going to take people like you and me to publicly shame and defame them, to discredit them with the word of God, to discredit them by literally pointing out the folly and the foolishness of what they're doing. Absolutely make fun of them for it. It's what Elijah does with the prophets of Baal. Pray louder. Your God can't hear you. He's taking a dump. <laughs> this man says he's a Maccabee warrior. He's a Judaizer. He is replacing the gospel that was given to you with another gospel as if there were another gospel. So the word of the Lord for the month of December is actually this. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.